welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today we are going to be drawing and painting the Eiffel Tower using pen and watercolor. This is more of an illustrative tutorial. This would work great if you're trying to make postcards from some of your summer travels. I've kind of stayed close to home this summer, but maybe some of you have actually been to Paris and seen the Eiffel Tower. That's on my bucket list and it's probably on most people's bucket list. It's such an iconic landmark, and I also think that Paris is just, at least for people like me, such a dreamy place. And especially as an artist, it's kind of like that art central. It's so rich in the arts and the history of it. It's just a really beautiful place. So anyway, you're lucky if you've been able to go there or live there. One day, one day I will go to Paris. Today, what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through drawing the Eiffel Tower in pencil, and I'm gonna break it into a few different steps that make it really simple. And then we're going to draw over our pencil lines and pen. You can erase the pencil or you can leave it if you like more of a sketchy look. And then we're going to paint it in using watercolors. And I'm gonna show you how to use your paper towel to make clouds in the sky, but of course you don't have to do it. You can paint the sky whatever color you want. You do not need to put clouds in it. And of course, the foreground, what you put below the Eiffel Tower, there's so many things you could do, so feel free to experiment and have fun with this project. Let's get started. These are the supplies that you need. You need watercolor paper, and I have cut my paper so that it's seven by nine inches. Watercolor paints, this is just a simple eight color set. A round brush, this is a number four round, but I actually think it's a six or an eight, and those numbers would be fine. We're just using one paintbrush for this tutorial a pencil and an eraser. I'm using my favorite Micron pen. This is a Pigma Micron pen, it's a 05. You need water, paper towel, and a scratch piece of paper, and that's it. I'm going to tape my paper down just so it doesn't move around like crazy while I'm drawing this. Think about where you want the Eiffel Tower on this paper. Do you want it to go higher than this? Do you want it to be smaller? Figure out where you want the top of it to be and where you want the bottom of it to be. So I'm just gonna make a little indication of where I want the top of mine to be with a little line. Make sure you draw really light in this part so you don't need to do a lot of erasing and so if you do need to erase, it's not going to be impossible. Now I want you to make a line where you want the bottom of your Eiffel Tower to be. And so I want mine to be about here because I wanna include a little bit of a landscape underneath. So I'm just gonna draw a line across. Now what you want to do is draw a line through the middle of your paper, just showing where the middle is. And this is just so we can keep it proportionate when we draw the Eiffel Tower on the sides of this. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out where the middle of this shape is, just to give us kind of a reference point. Doesn't need to be perfect. If you want to use your ruler, you can. So if this is halfway, think about this section right here being divided into about five different pieces. And if you came down a fifth of the way, that's where this top tower is. And I think this is the lookout tower. So we're going to draw a line trying to to keep it even, even on the left and the right side of this line. So I'm just gonna put a little line on the edge of it showing that's how far it goes out. So again, this is the first section and you can just put a line across it just showing there's like a platform right there. Then we're going to come halfway down. Yeah, the bottom part's about the same. If you divide it into fifths, then you would draw the second part about right here, just a little bit below the halfway line. And this one is about twice as wide as that top one. And again, try to keep it even so there's the same amount on this side of the line as you have on this side of the line. And I'm just going to indicate it by drawing a line on the edge so I know that's how far out that one's going. And then in between these two, about halfway, is your fourth section. So we're just going to indicate it. And it comes out further than the top section, not by a ton, but just a little bit more than this top section comes out. And again, you can kind of check it to see if it's even on both sides, if you need to make one a little bit shorter or one a little bit longer. Right now is probably a good time to do it. And then let's just make sure that this isn't longer than that. And let's indicate where the edge of this one would be. I'm just trying to keep these even. This side might come in just a little bit. Now we're going to draw the sidelines in for the Eiffel Tower. Once you've drawn these in, the next part is pretty simple. It's going to get bigger as it comes towards the bottom. So it's really, really small at the top. I'm bringing it in even closer than that line and it just slowly starts to come out and out and this bottom part is actually straight and then I'm trying to keep this line similar so just kind of look at it and try to make these two sides even you've drawn the framework now let's split this top part in half and once we reach not halfway a little bit lower than halfway I'm just gonna make a dot there and I'm gonna erase this line so it doesn't confuse us once I reach this I'm gonna start to break it into this section so we're dividing this top part into two and once we get to here I'm going to bring the 
the line this way and it is going to get a little bit bigger as it comes towards the bottom and same with this side it's going to get a little bit bigger as it comes towards the bottom and thicker and go ahead and draw that arch in and it comes a little bit higher than halfway so if this is halfway your arch is gonna come just a little bit higher than halfway so go ahead and put it in and try to keep it even all right I'm just gonna make some indications of these different platforms so this is a platform so we're just gonna come across the edge and make a line down and then draw a box going across the middle of this shape and then we're gonna draw another shorter line just right under it and it's actually a shadow then we're gonna thicken up this line as this curves around and where it hits this line we're gonna draw a line straight across if you want to you can draw some of these circles that come in here so there's just a circle in the middle a half circle that comes up and then you can draw smaller ones on the side just filling in that space and let's just draw this platform right here so that we can put the shapes underneath it so if this is the top of the platform bring the line out just a little bit and instead of going straight down this line actually comes back behind the Eiffel Tower so this line should come straight down and maybe over at the end like that because it's poking out but this one just comes out and then it has a very thin rectangle on top almost this platform thing again and then it comes back in draw a line under it and this is going to be shadow if you want I can just shade it in so you can kind of see where these shadows will be and then under this we're going to draw another line just a little bit down and then one more so we've divided it into one two three four sections and then under this section one more thin line across and then starting here and starting here we're going to divide these in half so I'm gonna start right here and just draw a line right through the middle of this and of course it's gonna stop right here but you can draw it right through since we're going to be erasing these lines and in these shapes right here you're going to make some X's Let's go ahead and fill in these shapes, divide up these sections right here into four. And I'm gonna make the middle line a little bit lower because this fourth section comes in between here. So we're gonna divide this length and this length into four different pieces, four squares, I guess. So I just divided it in half and then I'm gonna divide each one of these sections in half as well. And now each section in here, you're going to draw an X. So to make an X, you're just gonna go from corner to corner. And this one comes a little bit below that line. And then there is going to be a little bit of a shadow back here. And you can see part of this other leg. So I'm just going to draw a thicker line right here. So we know to shade that in a little bit in there. In the bottom section, it's similar to this section, except they have lines going through this way. So I'm going to divide it into three. There might be four, but I do have some trees in front of this. So I actually can't really see the bottom section completely. But let's just divide this space and this space into three. So one and then two and three. And do the same thing we did in this section, make X's. You don't need to do it in this top section, just these bottom three. All right, now let's work on this top part, this top section of the Eiffel Tower. Up here, there is a line coming down, and let's just put some straight lines in this section up here to divide it up. Then there's a short little one under it, just like a cap. And then up here, this wraps around, so this can come out a little bit further and wrap around. So I'm just bringing a small line that's coming back into the tower. And it's hard to see really what's up there, but there's definitely a shape, almost like a box, and this must be like an observation tower or something like that where people can come and there's things on top of it but then it comes to a point and goes up and I'm going to erase this point right here and just bring the top of my Eiffel Tower all the way up and there is a few things at the top so you can make it's not a cross but there are some things going on up there so I'm just drawing it across to indicate that and now we're going to divide up these sections into squares so think you're trying to make it into a square. So it's going to start out smaller up here. Your lines are going to be closer together. And as you move down, they're going to move apart gradually. And then all you wanna do is make some X's in these spaces. And you could go and just make individual X's if you wanted. So we have these X's in here. Go ahead and just fill each one of those squares in with an X. All right, this is the fun part. When we get in here, you, there's a few things we can do. I think if we do too much with our pencil, it's gonna be a little bit too hard to see. So what you wanna do is go over your lines with your pen, and what I would do first is these platforms, just because some of them don't have lines going through it. So you wanna make sure you get that in before you put all of these lines going through the platform since they're not there, especially these flat parts like this. Just think these rectangles that are going across, you want those to be free of any of these other lines so i just want to make sure we don't get them in there and then i'm going to do the same thing with this platform up here i just don't want to put any lines through it and underneath the platforms you can indicate the shading by just doing hatched lines so these are lines that are just close to each other so i'm just doing a little bit of hatching under each one of these sections all right after you get some of those shadows in and indicate some of those shapes and spaces 
I'm just indicating that there's some trees at the bottom. There's a few things going on in the background and I'm having these come back out to the edge. So this is, this is going to be greenery and bushes and things like that. I just wanna indicate it so I don't draw my Eiffel Tower over it since these trees are coming in front of it. You can fill in these different shapes. Like this might be the only shape I didn't really talk to you about what's inside of it. So if you want, I can kind of go over that one really quickly. So just draw a line across. This line does come through here. These are divided up into really thin triangle shapes. And when I say triangle, I mean rectangle. I just really struggle with those words. And there is some things going on in them. If you want to draw it in, you can just really keep it like that. But if you want to, there's just an X at the top and an X at the bottom that leaves like this diamond shape in the middle. So it's up to you if you want to put these in, you can. If you want to leave it a little bit more simple, you can. And then draw over the rest of your lines with your pen. And you can choose to erase out the pencil or keep it. It's totally up to you what you do with that section. Some people like to leave their pencil in because it looks a little bit more artistic. It's just really up to you. And you can add more detail with your pen in this area if you want. You could draw some people walking. Go ahead and erase out the pencil. Sometimes when you do that, you'll find some parts that you missed. So if you missed anything, go ahead and put it back in after you erase out the pencil. Grab your watercolors, your paintbrush, your water, your paper towel, and your scratch piece of paper. So we are going to paint blue over the whole entire thing. Then we'll add the grass and you can add some of that bronze color for the Eiffel Tower if you'd want to. Go ahead and make a puddle in your tray using water. Drop some water in there. And you can choose to paint the sky whatever color you would like if you want it to be in the morning or the evening or sunset or dawn. It's totally up to you. I'm just going to be painting a blue sky and I'm going to show you one trick with the blue sky. So I have a pretty big puddle. Now I'm going to start dropping blue into it, turning the puddle blue. And the more color I drop into it, the darker, of course, it's going to be. And you can keep it nice and bright if you like that. Or you can add a little bit of orange to it that will mute it down just a little bit so it's not quite so bright. So grab your paper and it might look dark, but once you start painting it on, this is about that hue. All right, now once we have this color, we're gonna paint this in pretty quickly because since we're blotting out clouds, we need it to be wet when we do that. So what we're going to do is just paint the whole thing in and then we're gonna come in with our paper towel and put the clouds in. So let's go ahead and paint this in. Make sure you have a big puddle because you do not want to stop and remix your sky color while we're painting this in. And also these edges I'm going to leave just nice and loose. This might even be darker than I wanted it to be. So just decide how far out you want the sky to come. You could tilt your paper if you want to have a flatter wash than I have here. I'm bringing it right across my Eiffel Tower, right across my landscape in front. I am trying to overlap my colors a little bit. Now grab your paper towel. And up here, I'm gonna put some pretty big clouds and they're gonna go right behind the Eiffel Tower. And then as I move towards the bottom, I'm just gonna start getting some smaller in there. You don't need to start in the puddle. You can come, you can overlap the edges with those clouds. And this should dry pretty quick. While it's drying, let's go ahead and mix up a green for the landscape in front. If you still have a blue puddle, unfortunately I don't. If you do, you could just add yellow to it. To make your own green, feel free to use the green that's right in your palette. We don't want this to be like a lime green, more of like a forest green. And again, it could be fall colors and maybe it's not even green at all. Use whatever colors you want. Keep adding color to your puddle if you want it to be darker. Grab that green and go ahead and paint in these two triangle sections right here. And it's okay, just make sure your background's dry and just fill it in. You can come right to the edge or you can kind of make your own there's not like a right or wrong way to do this. You could leave the blue and not have the green come all the way down. And then to make this area, we're gonna add a lot of yellow to this color. It's just a brighter grassy area. And I'm gonna make it brighter, kind of closer to this area. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush, blot it off, and then I just don't want it to be quite as dark down here. So it's just a little bit brighter green. And then in this background, we're going to make a really light green blue. So we're gonna add a lot more blue and more water. We almost just wanted the color of our background. So get a lot of water in there. I'm just checking it. So even more blue, it's kind of in the distance. Okay, add a little bit more blue to it and then you can go ahead and paint in this back area and you can paint it right through the Eiffel Tower or you can kind of leave it. Just showing that there's something back there. You could put some buildings in there, some people walking around. It's totally up to you what you decide to do with this. 
You could stop now or you can add some brown. So it's totally up to you what you decide to do at this point. If you want to add brown, you need to let it dry. Mix up a little brown, maybe with a little bit of red in your tray. You can add a little blue if you want it to be muted. And then you're just going to paint some of these areas in so they don't mix in with the sky since these areas are not clear, especially this tower, this area down here. Um, you can even paint right over your lines if you want to do that. It's totally up to you. So make a little puddle, add some brown, red. You could add a little bit of blue. This is what that looks like. Make sure your background is dry and then you can go ahead and add those colors to your tower. When they first presented that they were going to build it for the entrance of the World's Fair, and this was during 1887-1889, there were a lot of famous prominent artists in Paris that protested it, said it was kind of ruining this old Paris feel that the city had to add this huge steel building there. But now, many years later, it's become so iconic of Paris and a landmark that people recognize all over the world. Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you learned a few techniques in this tutorial and have a wonderful day. Thank you.